Hey guys, it's Core Ross and welcome to the 6 News Roundup. So today we're rounding up all the Rainbow Six Siege news for the last week or so. To begin with, we'll start with something new and that is some leaks of the upcoming season and potentially into the future as well. So we've got two leaks. This is the first one. Both of these come from relatively good sources that we've got good information from before. So this might be correct, but of course, take all this with a grain of salt as none of it might end up happening. So the first one is originally translated from Russian, and apparently the defender is going to be called Oryx, and he is going to be able to breach walls by charging into them, which is really cool. Kind of like the smasher from the Outbreak event, and he's going to have the MP5 with no ACOG, the Spaz-12 shotgun, which is Valkyries, the Bailiff, which I love, love that gun, and the UPS-40. Now... This is interesting. I did think we would get an operator at some point in the future that would be able to smash through walls. But I thought he would be an attacker and I thought he would also be a shield operator. Because I thought that made the most sense for me. So having him on defense and being able to bust through walls, certainly interesting. I don't see him being a particularly powerful operator. And that, is, you know, that ability doesn't have much in the way of utility. And there's a limited amount of times, of course, you could use it because you can't rebuild the wall. And... Yeah, it's interesting. I hope there would be some sort of knockback effect. Once you punch through, you'd like knock back enemies, kind of like Nomad's Charge maybe. But either way, interesting. And I wouldn't rule out the idea that he might well have a shield. Maybe not one he can equip all the time, but maybe when he does his charge to go through walls, maybe he would pull out some sort of little shield that he'd bust through, just to give him some protection, because of course he's going to be very vulnerable when he punches through a wall. But I like how this still keeps it all vague, because they'll do a lot of speculation without knowing everything. Now, the attacker is apparently female. She's going to have a likeable appearance, like Ella, like, who cares? And apparently her code name is Yana, so maybe she'll have something different in-game. And her gadget is really weird and vague, he says. So she has some sort of hologram that she can control, but that's about it. And she's got the ARX 200 with the ability to place a vertical grip. And she's got the G36C, so that's Ash's gun. And the MK1 uh, 9mm, so that's the Canadian secondary. So this is certainly interesting. Of course, we've already got a hologram operator with Alibi, but they are stationary holograms. So I kind of imagine this as a hologram that maybe you actually drive around like it's a drone. Maybe you have a, a POV perspective and you can drive it to position it into places that would then lure out a defender or maybe even this hologram could perhaps repel up a window so that you can put it there and make people jump out to take out that person but of course there's no person there's a hologram and you can get a jump on that run out being done by the defenders either way i do see a lot of potential with a hologram that can actually move and yeah could also be something similar to a halo where you just set off a hologram in a straight line like that would be, you know, if you could do that repeatedly, that would be really handy just to set one down right down a corridor and if it pinged like defender's locations when you used it, that'd be pretty cool. So either way, it could be very simple or it could be very complicated and I could see that working definitely far better than the charging through walls, even though the charging through walls is cool. And then apparently we have information about the year five season two defender. There's apparently a female. Now this is a big takeaway from you know, if, if everything in here is correct, apparently season one attacker is going to be a female and all of year four attackers were female. So we had Kali, we had Amaru, we had Nook and we had Gridlock. And then back in year three, we of course had Nomad on attack. Then we had Clash on defense and then Alibi on defense. So it is interesting because it's been over a year since we had a girl on defense and we may have to wait till season two of year five for that to happen. And then with the news that we're only getting six operators in year five, I think this will be the only operator that's coming out brand new in season two. I don't think there will be an attacker. Instead, I think the next season after that will have a male attacker. Now, apparently this girl is currently nicknamed as Slowpoke and she is going to have a gadget that does slow the enemies down so she is a defender she'll be slowing down attackers and apparently it slows them down kind of like barbed wire so it'd be kind of a mix of gridlock but on defense and they could do a lot with that gadget there's a lot of different ways to deploy something like that it could also do damage or not it could just be good at slowing people down yeah this would actually be probably a very good defender even though it's a very simple gadget it would be very, very useful. There'd be a lot of utility to it. And apparently, she can also mark hostile gadgets through cameras. 
I don't know how much use this would be. It would be handy to maybe, you know, jump on the cams and say, right, there's a drone here, and maybe I highlight it and be far easier to then go find it, perhaps. But also for other things like breaching charges, maybe it'd be handy to spot them at points. But overall, it's not the most useful. That would be a super powerful gadget actually on uh, attack. But on defense, could also be coming in useful, especially all the different gadgets we have out there. Now, she's going to apparently have uh, Legion's T5 SMG and the Super 90, but they haven't yet kind of picked all of those weapons out, so there's a chance that might change. Apparently, the next elites are going to be Buck and Zofia. Now, I do expect the Cav Elite to actually be out probably within the next couple of weeks because it is in-game. It's about the right time to release it. So possibly that would mean Buck maybe launching the next season with an Elite, and then Zofia possibly be in the mid-season and then going off away from Rainbow Six, apparently Ubisoft is working on a Battle Royale game. I actually do want them to release a Battle Royale game just because I want to see what it would be from Ubisoft. But apparently it will not be a Rainbow Six game. And yeah, that's it from that leak. So let's move on to the second leak. So this is a leaker that's given us very good information in the past. And apparently this person only has a little bit of new source information that they've come across. So apparently Pick and Ban is actually coming for maps. This is interesting. I'm assuming what you would do is this would be like, let's say you, you queue up to ranked, you would load up into the two different teams and then I'm guessing at that point you would actually be given a menu where you can ban certain maps and both teams would be able to ban a map or something like that, then maybe it randomly picks from what's left then loads up that map to play. Really interesting. And I could see this kind of happening in casual as well to just make it so people can kind of get rid of maps they don't like playing. But it is certainly interesting. To me, it does feel like it might just slow the game down too much where I'm like, okay, pick and ban for maps. Okay, load up the map, great. And now I've got to pick and ban for operators. Okay, done that. Then we finally get playing. Kind of worried about that. But interesting certainly to be able to do that and apparently a chachanka rework so this would be amazing if we get this with the launch of the season with the two new operators it would make the beginning of this year really good so apparently chanka's rework makes his lmg his primary weapon and he has an incendiary device of some sorts they don't appear to know what it is if they don't know what it is i'm thinking that isn't like a grenade i'm thinking it's probably a bit more complicated maybe something you place down maybe something else either way Certainly something fire-based, which is sweet. This could make Chanka awesome, or of course, it might not do anything, but I'm hoping that it'll be good. But we might see that at a Six Invitational. Then we've got the mention of replays. Now this is the ability to replay your game. So you load up the game, you can then watch from the different perspectives of different players, or you can actually probably get a free cam and look around while it's all going and like fast forward through, back it up. And we don't know how complex the feature will be, but if they add that in, that would be amazing. I'd absolutely love that. So, yeah, that's cool. We did see at the last uh, season reveal, there was some of their uh, pre-alpha footage. Some of the menus had a watch tab, which, of course, isn't in the game. And I thought maybe it was just for, like, live streams. You know, we click on it, maybe you can see the Pro League going on. But maybe it was actually for this replays thing they planned to add in. Now, they did say when they added in Vulcan as a new API... They said that they were going to use that to bring in some more advanced features in the future. So I am wondering if maybe the Vulcan API is somehow helping to bring this feature out into the game. Maybe. I don't know. Either way, freaking cool. I'll be able to use this feature to completely redo how I do the Mythbusters. I can actually record things from different angles and just show things way better than I currently can do from the, you know, the POV of an operator. But also, just from the average player, you can jump in, replay a match, and see where you messed up, what the enemy were doing. Maybe they had some sort of special tactic that they were trying out, or some special angles, and you want to see why you died at this certain place, or what happened this round, then you can actually go and check it out, which is really, really cool. So that's the end of all the leaks. Now, of course, all of this could end up being fake, or some of it could be fake, some of it could be misinterpreted. And maybe that whole replay thing is literally just the watch tab and it is just for live streams. Maybe you can actually just re-watch Pro League games, you know, and that's it. Maybe there's nothing actually special there at all. Now back to covering other news that happened this week. So of course we got the mid-season patch which brought us the balances and nerfs to the game. This got released on both platforms. 
We also got the Vulkan API on PC. So instead of using DirectX, you can choose to use Vulkan, which might give you more performance, but it does have downsides like recording gameplay and stuff like that's a little bit harder. But the devs do mention that this is going to lead to more advanced features, whatever that is. So looking forward to it. We also got a brand new map rotation for the quick match, which is, you know, used to be casual. So they brought some new maps in and took some maps out of that. So that has changed with, of course, people hating it or loving it with a passion. And then in other news, we only have two weeks left for the Road to SI event. So we're going to have two more menus, which is cool because I love the artwork. And after that, uh, that is, of course, the six Invitational, where we actually get the full reveal for the new season along with the Year 5 roadmap. There's going to be a ton of stuff to cover. So that is actually creeping up on us rather quickly and i'll be here in no time but that is all news for rainbow six siege over the last week or so thanks very much for watching and i'll catch you next time